um, thank you very much for joining. Uh, um, बहुत शुक्रिया एवरी यहाँ पे तो नाइट होती है आपके सुबह पाकिस्तान में फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान फ्रॉम हियर ऑल द पीपल हु ज्वाइन रियली मेक अस हैप्पी एंड कनेक्टेड इन दिस टफ टाइम्स डेली वी डिस्कस व्हाट्स गोइंग ऑन इन पाकिस्तान एंड यूएस अमंग ईच अदर बट टू टू स्टार्ट the um conversation we have uh a speaker who was here um right so sara temur um i don't know how you were unmuted oh yeah <laughs> sorry um okay so i was in uh, so i would what i will do is uh, today this is what i will go, uh, i'll do uh, after uh, sara you you um introduce yourself do not uh, start okay uh, after that i will introduce the panelists so that the people who are attending can can gear their um or direct their questions according to the Uh, expertise of our panelist yeah. so uh, go ahead uh, sara introduce yourself as a speaker sure um assalam alaikum um uh, thank you for inviting me to speak uh, mera naam sara temur hai uh, uh, main infectious disease ki specialist hu yahan par mount sinai new york mein kaam karti hu theek hai uh, farhan kadir aap uh, introduce kar rahe hain uh, assalam alaikum ji मैं फरहान खदीर हूँ मैंने मैं नफ्रोलॉजिस्ट हूँ और अभी मैं अपनी क्रिटिकल केयर की फेलोशिप कंप्लीट कर रहा हूँ एंड आफ्टर दैन आई मूविंग टू न्यू जर्सी फॉर माय प्रैक्टिस थैंक यू ओके ग्रेट डॉक्टर कबानी नूर महल कबानी जी अलकुम मेरा नाम नूर महल कबानी है मैं ह्यूस्टन में हूँ मैं पर्मनरी क्रिटिकल केयर स्पेशलिस्ट हूँ और ह्यूस्टन में काम कर रही हूँ मैं ज्यादातर टेली क्रिटिकल केयर करती हूँ अच्छा जी आई वांटेड टू सी सम ऑफ आवर गेस्ट फ्रॉम फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान मेहरुनिसा सजावल can you introduce yourself um, uh, you're gynecologist but are you um, involved in um, covid care ji mehrunisa dr mehrunisa Okay. Um, Professor Shamsa Hamayu, can you introduce yourself? Um, all right. So I see our uh, one of our regular guests and Professor um, Shakil Mirza is here. I can. Uh, invite him to be one of the panelists today also go ahead uh, dr shakil mirza please introduce yourself thank you dr rafiq uh, i am dr shakil mirza i am a consultant physician with did you go ahead um i don't know what happened Yeah, Dr. Shakil is here. Ji ji. Hope you go go ahead we are listening. Ji sir. I'm a consultant physician in Rawalpindi work in a secondary care setting but do care some patients with covid as well. Okay great. Um Ji <laughs> so uh, Sara please um, uh, start I think we can start the today's session. Okay uh, uh Walid I had sent you a few slides I'm not sure if you're able to project them um we will share it with everyone of course at the end but I wasn't sure if you're able to Sir if you have it on your uh, computer and if you see down below there is share screen 
if you put it on your laptop and then you say okay. share screen, then it start coming. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Just give me one second, sorry. Ji, uh, Sara Temur. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, we can see your slide. Unmute myself. And... Right, right. We can see your slide and now okay, we can great. hear you. Um, great. All right. Let me make sure I can advance. Yep. Okay. So, um, TK, like, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Um, and if there are any people from last week, I'm happy to ask questions. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, some of us have been on touch since last week on WhatsApp and I think if it's like this connection, if it's going on, then, you know, I think that we can help each other the most. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to talk for long, just for about five minutes. Um, as I said, I am an infectious disease doctor. Um, COVID management is obviously multidisciplinary. Hai. Usme, uh, not just infectious disease uh, doctors involved, hai. Usme critical care pulmonologists involved. Hai. And, Obviously, there's so much organ failure, so our nephrologists, other doctors are all involved in helping take care of these patients. Um, I just wanted to talk about what um, I wanted to elaborate on the last few weeks. I wanted to elaborate on those questions that were directed to me as an infection uh, doctor were in regards to uh, the virus itself and how to prevent it, um, etc. So is bare mein, like I wanted to talk a little bit um, ye ke teen, basically you have to think of it in terms of broad categories. Sabse pehle to ye ke aapne, uh, agar aap healthcare setting ki baat kar rahe hain, to chahe wo doctor ka office hai, chahe wo clinic hai, chahe wo hospital hai, pehli cheez to ye ke aapne like jo COVID ka germ hai, usko apne hospital ya apni facility mein aane se kaise prevent karna hai. Sabko awaz aa rahe hai, right? Sorry, I'm just, I'm not looking at the okay. Yeah, bilkul okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, you have to prevent how you have to prevent it from your healthcare setup. And we will talk a little bit about it. Then, we will talk about it that when you identify a patient who has COVID or can be, then what do you have to do? And the third thing is that you have to think of yourself as a healthcare provider, nurses, doctors, all of you who work in your hospital or your office, janitors, cooks, everyone, उन सब को आपने कैसे प्रोटेक्ट करना है? तो सबसे पहला जो है कि जी आपने जॉम्स को अपने हेल्थकेयर सेटअप में आने से कैसे रोकना है? तो इसपे हमने थोड़ा सा पिछले हफ्ते बात की थी। एक मिनट अभी एडवांस नहीं हो रहा फॉर सम रीज़न। ओके। जी जी। तो सबसे पहले ये कि आपने कैसे करना है? तो सबसे पहले अब इसके obviously कुछ limitations I can imagine हो सकते हैं पाकिस्तान में depending के आपके clinic का setup क्या है ज़ाहिरी बात है अगर आप एक छोटे rural area में हैं या semi urban area में हैं छोटे शहर में हैं तो ये limitations और भी ज़्यादा हो सकती हैं लेकिन I want to still tell you about this because everybody has smartphones etc and this is something to think about कि इस चीज़ को हमें develop करना चाहिए पाकिस्तान में the concept of telehealth which is now more and more expanded because of this pandemic. So the idea is that if a patient is not very sick, then how do you prevent it from the clinic or the hospital? 
लाने के बजाय उसको घर पे मैनेज किया करें एंड ये आप टेली हेल्थ विजिट के थ्रू कर सकते हैं आप फोन के ऊपर कर सकते हैं आप पेशेंट से एक अच्छी हिस्ट्री लें एंड ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट कि वाकई इनको कोविड जैसी चीज हो सकती है या नहीं हो सकती बहुत से लोगों को एलर्जीज होती हैं दूसरे वजह से उनको खांसी इस इस तरह के सिम्टम्स हो सकते हैं अगर आपको लगता है कि इस मरीज को कोविड है फिर उसके बाद आप फर्दर डिटर्मिन कर सकते हैं कि उनके सिम्टम्स कितने सवियर हैं क्या वो माइल्ड सिम्टम्स हैं या उससे ज्यादा सवियर सिम्टम्स हैं अगर माइल्ड सिम्टम्स हैं तो उन लोगों को एक्चुअली घर पे मैनेज किया जा सकता है एंड इस दैट्स व्हाट वी कॉल आइसोलेशन अगर आपको लगता है कि मेरे मरीज को कोविड हो सकता है लेकिन वो इतना बीमार नहीं लग रहा उसको लाइक like, सांस का बहुत ज्यादा मसला नहीं है सिर्फ खांसी है और थोड़ा सा जुकाम है तो आइडियल ये है कि आप उनको घर पे ऑब्जर्व करें उनको बताएं कि वो अपने आप को आइसोलेट करें अदर मेंबर्स ऑफ द फैमिली से काम पे ना जाए कम्युनिटी में मत इंगेज करें फॉर एटलीस्ट सेवन डेज अपने आप को सेल्फ मॉनिटर करें फॉर रेस्पिरेटरी सिम्टम्स और अपना अपना टेम्परेचर चेक करें दिन में दो दफा एंड देन द की थिंग फ्रॉम योर एंड इज के आपने आपने फॉलो अप करना है पेशेंट के साथ सो लाइक इन टू डेज और वट एवर देर शुड बी अनदर टेले हेल्थ विजिट जिसमें आप असेसमेंट करें कि मरीज का क्या हाल है अगर मरीज वर्स हो रहा है तो फिर ऑफ कोर्स यू ब्रिंग द मेन फॉर अ फॉर्मल असेसमेंट एंड उसमें भी ये कि डिपेंडिंग अगर आपको लग रहा है कि पेशेंट को कोविड है तो बेहतर यह है कि बजाय इसके वो आपके क्लिनिक में आए इससे बेहतर यह है कि वो एक इमरजेंसी रूम में जाए या अस्पताल में जाए जहाँ पर एक सवियर कोविड के मरीज का इलाज हो सकता है अदरवाइज अगर आपका मरीज बेहतर हो रहा है अगर वो बुखार के बगैर हैं फॉर सेवेंटी टू आवर्स एंड उनके रेस्परेटोरी सिम्टम्स खत्म हो गए हैं या बहुत खत्म हो रहे हैं तो फिर आप उनकी आइसोलेशन खत्म कर सकते हैं लेकिन एक मजीद एहतियात जो है वो ये है कि उसके बाद जब वो मरीज वापस कम्युनिटी में जाता है जब वो शेयर्ड एरियाज में जाता है अपने घर के तो वो और बाहर अगर जाता है लाइक तो वो सर्जिकल जो एक रूटीन मास्क होता है वो वो चौदह दिन के लिए एडिशनली पहने इन दो सेटिंग्स एंड देन ऑब्वियसली पेशेंट एजुकेशन के जी हाथ आप बहुत अच्छी तरीके से धोएं बीस सेकेंड के लिए फ्रीकुंट हैंड वॉशिंग हैंड सैनिटाइजर यूज करें जब आप हाथ नहीं धो सकते खांसी अगर आप करते हैं तो आप एल्बो या टिश्यू में करें अपने अपने आंखों को या अपने अपने शक्ल को चेहरे को हाथ ना लगाएं और घर में जितनी भी कॉमनली टच सर्फिस हमको कम से कम दिन में एक दफा बना तो दो दफा तो दिस इज कोई और मैं कह रहा हूँ म्यूट करें ताकि डिस्टर्बेंस ना हो अपने अपने फोन को म्यूट रखें अनलेस यू आर टॉकिंग जी गो अहेड सारा प्लीज सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन मैनेज समबडी जो कि बहुत ज्यादा बीमार नहीं है विद समथिंग लाइक कोविड जरूरी नहीं है कि उनको वापस लाइक अपने क्लिनिक वगैरह में लाया जाए जस्ट फॉर दिस ओके ऑल राइट और ये एक ट्रियाज सिस्टम है इट्स एन एग्जांपल ऑफ अ ट्रियाज सिस्टम लाइक और ये बहुत जरूरी है आपका जो भी जो भी यूनिट आप रन करते हैं चाहे अस्पताल का एक सेक्शन है क्लिनिक है डॉक्टर्स ऑफिस है ये एक सिस्टम जो है सम काइंड ऑफ सिस्टम नीड्स टू बी इन प्लेस ट्रियाज करने के लिए तो सबसे बाहर लाइक अगर आपका चाहे चौकीदार खड़ा है चाहे लाइक आपका रिसेप्शनिस्ट है जो भी है जो फर्स्ट कॉन्टैक्ट है एक मरीज के साथ जब वो वॉक इन करता है वहां से प्रोटेक्शन और एक ट्रियाज सिस्टम शुरू होना चाहिए ऑन टू दी द डॉक्टर एंड द नर्स एक्सेट्रा तो ज, अब आजकल जैसे कोविड के बहुत से केसेस आ रहे हैं पाकिस्तान में भी बढ़ रहे हैं लाइक जो मैंने सुना है दो दो दिन पहले लाइक पांच हजार तक केसेस हो चुके हैं और पाकिस्तान ऐसी एक जगह है लाइक जहां पर अगर ये खुदा ना खास्ता फैला तो बहुत ज्यादा मसला हो सकता है लिहाजा ये छोटी छोटी चीजें करने से लाइक हम शायद इस चीज को कंटेन कर सकते हैं कुछ कुछ सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग और ये सारे जो प्रोटेक्टिव मेजर्स है इनके लिए एविडेंस है कि ये काम करते हैं तो जहां से लाइक मरीज आ रहा है लाइक जो पहला बंदा कांटेक्ट करता है एवरीबडी शुड वेयर अ मास्क दीज डेज एंड दैट्स व्हाट आई एम सीइंग अराउंड इन माय हॉस्पिटल अदर प्लेसेस के जी जो ट्रियाज का बंदा है जो सिक्योरिटी ऑफिशियल है हर किसी ने मास्क पहना हुआ है ताकि वो फर्स्ट कांटेक्ट से टू टू सम डिग्री एटलीस्ट प्रोटेक्टेड है फिर लाइक ट्रियाज सिस्टम है उसमें आप पूछते हैं कि जी कॉमन जो कोविड के सिम्टम्स uh, है आपको बुखार है कि नहीं है आपको खांसी है कि नहीं है आपको नजला जुकाम लाइक सांस का मसला अगर तो उस मरीज के ये सारे सिम्टम्स हैं तो फिर वो कोविड की स्क्रीन में इंक्लूड होता है आप क्या करें पहली चीज आप आपने खुद तो मास्क पहना है वही आप उनको एक मास्क पकड़ाएं और उनको आइसोलेट करें अब बहुत ज्यादा डिस्कशन रही है लाइक इन द लिटरेचर 
and in the media as well ki ji airborne isolation chahiye ya nahi chahiye like airborne isolation rooms jo hain wo itne readily available nahi hote hamare apne hospital mein sirf ek ambulatory outpatient uh, airborne room hai so you can't put everybody in an airborne room so the thing to do is aap unko mask pakraye aur unko kisi bhi private room mein isolate kare darwaza band kare and then you know go and notify whoever needs to Uh, be notified. So doctor, nurse, just ne bhi ab mareez ko take na hai. Ab jab wo mareez ek private room mein hai, ab jo banda andar jaye, wo fir pure protective equipment ke saath jaye, jis mein aapka face shield bhi hai, eye protection ke liye, aapka mask bhi hai, jo ke N95 bhi ho sakta hai, aur surgical mask bhi ho sakta hai, aapka gown hai aur aapka glove hai. ठीक है, वहाँ से आप patient को assess करें और फिर आप decide करें कि उनको treat करना है या नहीं करना. और जो टेस्टिंग क्राइटेरिया है वो कॉन्स्टेंटली चेंज हो रहे हैं अभी भी चेंज हो रहे हैं एंड आई जस्ट वांट टू से हर मरीज को टेस्ट करना जरूरी नहीं है uh, अगर कोई मरीज इतना बीमार है कि वो आपके क्लिनिक या अस्पताल तक आया है ऑब्वियसली एक स्ट्रॉन्ग कंसिडरेशन है उनको टेस्ट करने के लिए uh, लेकिन यू हैव टू वर्क विद योर रिसोर्स आपके पास कितनी टेस्टिंग अवेलेबल है क्या कर सकते हैं आप क्या नहीं कर सकते और उस हिसाब से आप डिसाइड करें कि आगे आपने कैसे बढ़ना है um or you um i thought this was a nice uh, visual it basically uh, shows everything that's required um as personal protective equipment for doctors for nurses etc or you cdc uh, key recommendation hai and isme wo aapko dono options dete hain to so ideal situation to ye hai ki aapke paas ek n95 ya us tarah ka ek higher respir respirator ho अगर आपको वो N95 नाइनटी फाइव करना पड़ रहा है तो फिर उसके ऊपर आपके पास सर्जिकल मास्क पियो के ताकि वो बाहर से लाइक like, सिक्रीशन वगैरह के साथ स्टेन ना हो ऊपर से आपके पास एक फेस शील्ड है बाकी आपके पास ग्लव्स हैं और एक मास्क है और एक गाउन है ठीक है अगर ऑब्वियसली N95 नाइनटी फाइव या अमरीका में भी नहीं मिल रहे और बहुत से बहुत सी जगहों पर लाइक एज यू मस्ट अवर्ड लाइक बहुत ज्यादा प्रोटेक्टिव इक्विपमेंट का शॉर्टेज है तो उस सिचुएशन में अगर N95 नाइनटी या दूसरा कोई इस तरह का रेस्पिरेटर नहीं है यू कैन वेयर अ सर्जिकल मास्क आप उसको डबल कर लें कुछ कर लें इफ यू वांट टू हैव एडिशनल प्रोटेक्शन बट यू कैन यूज इट दैट इज एक्सेप्टेबल बिकॉज मोस्टली ये वायरस लाइक और यहाँ से इसलिए ये सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग का कॉन्सेप्ट आता है ये जो छह फीट का डिस्टेंस की जो लोग बात करते हैं वो ये कि जो ज्यादातर ट्रांसमिशन होती है ये एक शॉर्ट डिस्टेंस में होती है बिकॉज ऑफ ड्रॉपलेट्स लाइक एंड एंड एरोसोल्स हैं लेकिन it it it's not the same as 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 tuberculosis or something which hangs out in the air for a really long time lehaza airborne isolation aapko absolutely zaruri nahi hai zyada tar jo transmission hoti hai wo hoti hai jab aap close contact mein aur us cheez ko aap dusre uh, protective equipment ke sath bhi prevent kar sakte hain like a routine mask दूसरे क्वेश्चन जो पिछले हफ्ते बहुत से लोग पूछ रहे थे जो कि क्लिनिक्स में थे इन सम ऑफ द स्मॉलर सिटीज वो ये कि आप अपने क्लिनिक्स को आप अपने जो पेशेंट रूम्स हैं उनको कैसे साफ करें एंड उसमें लाइक दे वर अ फ्यू एग्जांपल्स ऑफ लोकल प्रोडक्ट्स एक्सेट्रा एंड मुझे इतना उनका इल नहीं है लेकिन मैं सिर्फ ये कहूँगी एंड एंड ये थर्टी नाइन पेज डॉक्यूमेंट है जो कि सी के वेबसाइट के ऊपर अवेलेबल है and um, this is actually courtesy of dr uh, noor mahal like who mentioned it last week and isme aapke paas ek bahut wide list hai of disinfectants jo ke aap use kar sakte hain if you go through this isme isme bahut zyada options available hain you know like um, uh, sodium hypochlorite for example which is bleach like you know iske alawa aur bhi as you go through it you'll see so aap ye ingredients dekhein aur fir aap dekhein ki aapke paas jo local prepared products hain wo kaun se hain aur unme kya cheez hai and us hisab se aap डिसाइड uh, करें कि आपने यू uh, नो you know, अपने क्लिनिक की लाइक like, जो मरीज का बेड है लाइक like, जो एग्जामिनेशन टेबल है एक्सेट्रा उसको आपने कैसे साफ करना है और किस चीज से आप साफ कर सकते हैं लेकिन एज आई सेड लाइक इस वायरस को मारने के लिए बहुत से डिफरेंट ऑप्शंस ऑप्शंस हैं एंड आई एम श्योर यू कैन फाइंड समथिंग लोकली अवेलेबल एंड देन जो मरीज घर पे है उसकी जैसे आप एजुकेशन करते हैं हैंड हाइजीन वगैरह पे एंड एज आई मैंशन के सर्विसेज को घर पे साफ करना बहुत जरूरी है तो उस पर भी सी के ऊपर गाइडेंस अवेलेबल है कि जी आप घर में किस तरह से सफाई कर सकते हैं आई एनकरेज यू टू टेक अ लुक एट दिस लिंक एंड इसमें भी बहुत सी ऑप्शंस हैं बेसिकली कोई भी सरफेस क्लीनर आप घर में इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं यू जस्ट हैव टू बी डिलीजेंट अबाउट इट एंड घर में कम से कम एक दफा अगर कोई बीमार बंदा है दो दफा शेयर्ड एरियाज को साफ करें ठीक है एंड अगर आपके पास बाकी कुछ नहीं है तो दिस इज अ रेसिपी लाइक यू नो फॉर प्रिपेयरिंग अ ब्लीच सॉल्यूशन ये जो यहाँ पे लिखा है कि आप पांच टेबलस्पून ब्लीच ले लें पाउडर लाइक उसको लाइक वाटर में मिलाएं 
and basically make the solution of four teaspoons of bleach per quart of water and usko bhi aap use kar sakte hain ghar mein apna safai wagaira karne ke liye and then uh, another link on there jo ke aap dekh sakte hain for frequently asked questions is from the EPA and iske upar bhi aapke paas bahut si information hai on uh, disinfectants that you can use uh lastly i won't talk too much about treatment i just want to say ke this is still um, an area of active research agar kisi ko like or information chahiye on therapeutics that are being used treatment guidelines like jo ke right now institution dependent hai har institution ne apni guidelines banayi hai but if people still want to talk about it i'm happy to talk about it next week uh, another session that's focused just on treatments we can certainly talk about it but i do want to say ke filhal like you know is iska koi set ilaj nahi hai as far as antivirals are concerned ya other anti parasitic medications jinki baat kar rahe hain ki ji they have activity against the virus ya kuch biologics ki baat kar rahe hain wo sab kuch abhi study ho raha hai and there really isn't any thing that's um that set in stone and the other thing is ki ke approach multidisciplinary hai so you have to work with your other colleagues बिकॉज अब जब इन लोगों की ऑटोपसीज हो रही हैं हम हम मजीद समझ रहे हैं कि कोविड की पैथोफिजियोलॉजी क्या है और उसमें नजर आ रहा है कि बहुत से लोगों को थ्रोम्बाए हैं लाइक माइक्रो थ्रोम्बाए हैं इसलिए उनकी किडनीज फेल होती हैं देर इज एन एलिमेंट ऑफ थ्रोम्बाए और क्लॉट्स इन द लंग्स एंड इसलिए भी उनकी लंग्स फेल हो रही है इट्स नॉट अ स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड सिचुएशन जहाँ पर पहले हम समझते थे कि सिर्फ साइटोकाइन रिलीज है और उसकी वजह से किसी को सार्स हो जाता है लिहाजा अब स्टेरॉइड्स की बात आ रही है और एंटी कोगुलेशन की बात आ रही है और ये चीजें जो है आपके क्रिटिकल केयर और लंग डॉक्टर्स आपको ज्यादा समझा सकते हैं लेकिन उस रिगार्ड में भी इफ यू वॉन्ट प्रोटोकॉल एक्सेट्रा लाइक एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट दैट मोर वी कैन डू इट थ्रू अ सेशन दैट्स डेडिकेटेड टू थेरापूटिक्स एंड लास्टली आई लाइक टू मैंशन ये इन्फेक्शन डिजीज सोसाइटी ऑफ अमेरिका अमेरिका की वेबसाइट है दे केम अप विद जस्ट दीज प्रिलिमिनरी गाइडलाइंस it doesn't say a whole lot right now it basically encourages people to um you know research and to try and get people into clinical trials taki hum samajh sake ki kya kaam karta hai kya kaam nahi karta lekin iski abhi update aayegi diagnosis pe etc so agar aap us website ko follow kare you should be able to see um you know like updates and more information come along um i'm happy to take any questions thank you Thank you, uh, Sara, for a great um, overview of uh, prevention. Uh, Sara Temur is our ID specialist, and right in New York City, which um, unfortunately has been the epicenter of this COVID-19, actually in the whole world. So, so great experience, unfortunately, that uh, Dr. Sara Temur have, uh, and so we can come back to those questions. um uh, let me introduce um quickly um g- going around about i know dr abdul rahman i'm unmuting he is a, a psychiatrist in um uh, uh calgary canada and and i see him he's a great um uh, educationist and and we have actually uh are going to schedule a um another psychiatrist from harvard approached us that he has been uh, giving lectures and webinar on on uh, psychiatric aspect of this uh, covid-19 uh, so um so obviously that's a great uh, um also angle because it has um um you know affected so many people in anxiety and depression that coming out of this so dr abdul rahman you can unmute yourself and uh, and um, introduce yourself so i can thank you for recognizing uh, uh, dr shahid uh, happy to be here i think uh, first of all it's a great initiative and i must commend the uh, the talk that we just heard, heard it was actually um a very comprehensive uh, and uh, nicely delivered so congratulations for doing that with regard to the mental health issues i'm a child psychiatrist uh, in calgary uh, division chief for child psychiatry in the zone as well as the chief of psychiatry at children's hospital and uh, we certainly uh, um have prepared ourselves for uh, uh, the backlash the 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 uh, effects of uh, the covid on to children and uh, 
we haven't seen any surge, and uh, but we are preparing, getting ready for that, and trying to educate the community at the same time. Uh, right now, we are preparing to um, make ourselves available, Children's Hospital, for the adult patient that uh, we are ready to take uh, to treat them uh, at the end of their uh, uh, recovery. So, uh, um, luckily, we are doing pretty well here. But I'll be happy to um, take part in any discussion or anything that I may um, uh, shed uh, the, the psychiatric side uh, or um, put a light on that aspect of the problem. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I will unmute Dr. Shaquille Mirza. Um, Dr. Shaquille, uh, do you have any comment or question, introduce yourself. I think you already did, but uh, once again, for people who Dr. came Dr. Mirza, consultant physician from Raul Pindi. Uh, a question to Dr. Sara and then a comment. Question is on the use of personal protective equipment. <clears throat> for example, working in a secondary care setting where we do not have uh, suspected COVID, but we treat every patient as a possible COVID. If uh, we are doing some procedures, uh, we'll say a simple procedure like examination of throat or there are some patients, I do some upper DJ endoscopies as well. So some patients need an urgent endoscopic procedure. So we are using full mask, which is N95 mask, goggles, eye shield, gloves, and we have full body suits as well. But some people use gowns because they don't have full body suits. So what is the comparison between the protection of a gown with full coverage of the uh, skin and body as opposed to a protective full body suit? Any difference between the two in terms of protection for the healthcare provider? Uh, no, I don't think there is. Uh, I don't think there's any particular information or data that's available in regards to just the body suit versus the, the gown. Um, but I will say that depending on what PPE is available, hai, like I know NHS, mein, for example, people are using just aprons which go around the lower body and don't even cover the upper body. So as long as the gown is worn appropriately and baki apne mask and everything else, like you don't have to have a body suit. But I will say that the gown or sara personal protective equipment is one thing and to remove it is another thing. When you Procedure कर चुके हैं जब भी आपने patient को examine कर लिया ये बहुत जरूरी है कि आप उसको properly उतारें या जिसको duffing कहते हैं like और उसमें जरूरी ये है basically and इसके बहुत सी videos हैं online etc आप देख सकते हैं कि properly gown को dispose of कैसे करने और उतारना कैसे but important ये है कि आप बाहर से अपने आप को contaminate ना करें क्योंकि अब बाहर का सब सब जो है अगर कोई secretions हैं या covid है वो सारे बाहर की तरफ है लेहाज़ा जरूरी है कि आप इस तरह से उतारें gloves or you know you don't touch the outside basically and you wash your hands right after but you can use either okay okay thank you uh, can you ask another question another sure, later sure, go day? ahead Shiki. Yeah, it's more of a comment than a question and it's for the use of telemedicine i think this is a great initiative and in a country like Pakistan, we, where we do things only when we are forced to, I think this is an opportunity where the telemedicine can come in big. And we as uh, physicians have introduced uh, uh, some uh, telemedicine software in our clinics and all that. But the, uh, um, I want to hear from other Pakistani colleagues as well. The uptake rate of these facilities and the education of our users, our clients in terms of use, because people are very happy in doing a WhatsApp or a Facebook Messenger call, but going on a website and use, using a proper telemedicine portal, this uh, hasn't really caught on as yet. So if anybody has any experience on this or any comments, I would really be very happy if they can share it with us. So I, I can, I can uh, speak on this, um, uh, Dr. Shikil Meza, that Perfect. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> a lot of time we think, okay, uh, you know, U.S. Uh, is, um, you know, very uh, developed and very educated. So, but I can tell you that really the rate of uptake is so low because the, the older generation, um, 70 years old, 60 years old, 
Um, and, and particularly in neurology, obviously we see more um, older uh, generation, older elderly people. So, uh, so it's, a real, it's a real problem. And we started a month ago when I came back from Pakistan 13th April, next like 15th, 16th April we started. And uh, I was surprised to see that five, six, four, five patients. And now today I saw about 12 patients on, on um, tele from my home. Uh, and normally I don't see many maximum like 18 or 16 patients. Um, but um, uh, but it, 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 is, it is a process. So what I'm uh, trying to tell that whether it's Pakistan or whether it's um, United States, anything you start new, whether people are educated or uneducated or tech savvy or not, anything new takes time to people to get on. The second thing I would say that the, the medium should be simple. Like here we have a bigger problem of HIPAA, which in Pakistan is not as severe, I think. So, so here in, during this pandemic, uh, the insurers and CMS has allowed to use uh, WhatsApp, uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, I, um, Skype and FaceTime, and of course WhatsApp as well, but mostly people use here um, uh, FaceTime. And, so, but FaceTime and Skype are very uh, simple. And then there are some other uh, telemedicine companies like Doximi who are very simple that they send a text to the patient's telephone and patient click that and there you go, right? So I think the, the solution to Pakistan and even here is a very simple medium where patient can get it on the phone. When patient has to go on computer or laptop, it's not going to happen. Or it, it, the uptake will be low. You're right, thank you. But uh, HIPAA compliance is mandatory over here as well, especially for the formal portals that we're using. And we are using HIPAA compliance. Okay, good, good. Yeah, but you. Uh, you know, still, uh, I would say if uh, maybe like Doximi and uh, simpler uh, people who, who are HIPAA compliant, they, they should be simple. Like I have a uh, Helio through my electronic medical record and that's the worst. I hardly get uh, like 30% patient on that. Most of the patient I'm seeing on, um, on I, uh, you know, FaceTime and uh, others. Anyway, let me move on to, um, to Farhan, Kadir Farhan. I'm going to uh, ask you uh, also a few questions after you introduce yourself uh, yes. so that you also keep on um, uh, taking questions. Um, so the, um, the question um, is that, what is the data available on reinfection? Does, uh, once a person is infected and recovered, uh, how many uh, of them will be infected or no? Uh, or is there a data or percentage? Ji, assalamu alaikum ji. Ji, I'm Farhan, I'm a nephrologist or critical care mail. So the data actually is not there. Um, they, there's a mouse data, I'm sorry, apologize, monkey data, uh, where they actually infected the monkeys and tried to reinfect them and they were not successful to do that. Uh, so in humans, there is still not a great data to say that whether you're gonna get reinfected or not. There is some concern that the people actually came back, had a positive test, even after they've been recovered, but that has not been published properly. It says that there is a positive test which was never been negative and some people believe that is a persistence of the viremia, which was then came back positive in PCR. Uh, again, there is some data that the fecal uh, shedding is still there for four weeks. Um, so essentially, is the data is still not there. And the antibody titers, there is some data coming from Washington and New York that the antibody titers is being checked is variable among each population, among the sickness, but it's there. Okay, great. So um, then uh, the other uh, question is that 
what is the um, uh, d does the coronavirus can be detected in urine or it comes in urine or no? So again, as I said, there is only one paper where they said there. Uh, one second, sorry. Uh, there is some paper. Uh, sorry. Uh, there is there is some paper about as I said, some fecal shedding. Um, and there is one paper which I read came from France where they did say some urine shedding. And after that, in nephrology world, we stopped spinning the urine. Uh, since that small data came out uh, for, the, for the prevention of COVID spread. Uh, so that, can, can that infect people through urine and fecal matter? Uh, we, we, we're not really sure about that, but that's what the data shows. Uh, but definitely in terms of prevention, uh, this is kind of a standard practice all over US that we don't spin the urine at all and we keep the same precautions if possible. Okay, great. Thank you, Farhan. I will move on to our next panelist, Kaleem. Kaleem, I just please. had a comment, sorry. sorry go ahead, Sarah. I just wanted to elaborate, like, thank you, Farhan, um, sure, sure. uh, for your um, answers. Um, basically, um, I mean, there's data in all different kinds of places, like, um, you know, one of the studies that's in the New England Journal, um, Metalite was very, very useful in terms of okay, virus, you have with different situations, may kitna zada survive karta hai, usme unhone surfaces ki bhi baat ki hai, and sare bodily fluids ki bhi baat ki hai, or uh, urine mein virus hai, lekin feces mein probably zyada hai, jaysay Farhan keh rahe te, lekin basically right now, joh hume viral shedding ki duration most reliably pata hai, woh hume sirf respiratory uh, secretions ke liye pata hai. And wo, that, that's up to 21 days. Like most cohorts are showing ki ji, up to 21 days, you can continue to shed the virus. As far as the antibodies concerned, Farhan is absolutely right. We don't know ki ye neutralizing antibodies hai ya nahi hai. Like the suggestion based on animal studies is ke aap ko reinfection ke khilaaf protection hogi. And if this virus is like all the other coronaviruses, there is protection against reinfection. But we just don't know that yet. And as you know, okay, hum plasma, convalescent plasma ke uh, ko therapy ke taur pe use kar rahe. And I think one study se bhi zada pata chalega ke aapko kitni protection milti against reinfection. But the broad anticipation is that there will be protection. We just don't know that for sure right now. Okay, great. Uh, on this, uh, Sarah, also, because you're talking about urine and feces, uh, uh, sampling and uh, testing, what is the first or um, uh, the CBC report of a, uh, what, what abnormalities you will see in CBC? Um, typical abnormalities, like, I mean, we certainly do see a lympho, uh, I mean, initially, you have leukocytosis, but especially just severely ill patients, hai, lymphopenia is what's been described uh, pretty consistently. So, a lot of people who are lymphopenic, hai, but I mean, I, I mean, ab hum, you know, like, like today I saw, I looked over 50 patients with COVID, like, and that's my day these days, every single day. So there's certainly a wide range, like kuch lo, especially jo immune suppressed and jo bohat severely ill hai, like because of critical illness and other things, cancer ho gaya, kuch bhi ho gaya. Wo log to, like, you know, if you look at their differential, aapko nazar aata hai, ke, like they can even be neutropenic uh, and certainly lymphopenic. Lymphopenia is what's been described very, very consistently as a classic finding in this, with this infection. Like, you can see a broad range of white count elevation and kuch logon ke mene, 50,000 se bhi upar white counts they can, jo ke as they get a little bit better to come down. Thank you, um, Sarah, about that. Let me uh, go towards uh, Kaleem. Kaleem, please uh, introduce yourself and, uh, and uh, any comment and question. So uh, I'm Kaleem Ahmed. Uh, I'm a pulmonary critical care and sleep medicine. I've been in this forum for, uh, since the beginning, um, learning a lot. I think that today has discussed a very difficult topic, especially when our intent was that we in Pakistan, we would have to do what we are learning from experiences, what we are learning from, what we are seeing, what we are 
گائڈ کریں تو میرا خیال ہے کہ آئی تھنک شی ہیز ڈرن اے ورلڈ فل جاب سو تھینک یو سارا سیکنڈ تھنگ کہ جو ابھی بات ہو رہی تھی ٹیلی میڈیسن کی آپ نے بالکل صحیح کہا شاید کہ ٹیلی میڈیسن جو ہے وہ ایک ایوالونگ فیلڈ ہے میرا خیال ہے کہ جو ہپا کمپلائنس ہے یہ الاؤ می ٹو سی دس تھنگ یہ مغربی دنیا کے چوچلے ہیں ہمیں پاکستان میں اپنی انوائرمنٹ میں رہتے ہوئے وہاں کے لوگوں کی ضرورت اور وہاں کی جو ماحول ہے اس کے لحاظ سے اپنی پریکٹسز کو ہم آہنگ کرنا چاہیے ہم ہر وہ چیز جو مغربی دنیا میں ہوتی ہے اس کے مختلف پولیٹیکل اور نان پولیٹیکل ایشوز ہوتے ہیں ہم اس کو بغیر سوچے سمجھے اپنے ملک میں اپلائی نہیں کر سکتے ہمیں رسک بینیفٹ دیکھ کر اس کے لحاظ سے فیصلہ کرنا چاہیے میں بذات خود جب سے یہ چیزیں ہوئی ہیں ہماری انشورنس کمپنی نے وہ ساری ہپا کے رول جو ہے سسپینڈ کر دیے ہیں جو جو کہ بہت ہی اچھا کام ہے کیونکہ اگر آپ لوگوں کو سہولت نہیں دیں گے تو پھر آپ ان کو صحیح وقت پہ صحیح علاج نہیں کر سکتے جہاں تک بات ہے پاکستان میں تو یہاں تو مختلف طریقے سے ہمیں انشورنس کمپنی کے تھرو جو ہے اپنی سروسز کے پیسے ملتے ہیں میرا نہیں خیال کہ پاکستان میں کچھ اس قسم کی سہولت موجود ہے تو میرے خیال سے ہر فزیشن کو ہر آرگنائزیشن کو اپنے لحاظ سے کچھ امپرووائز کرنا پڑے گا جس کے تحت وہ لوگوں کو جو ہے وہ ایک اچھا مشورہ دے سکیں اور اچھے ماحول میں اور حفاظت کے ساتھ تاکہ اس وائرس کو پھیلنے سے بچا سکے تھینک یو کلیم نیکسٹ از ڈاکٹر کبانی پلیز گو ہیڈ اینڈ انٹروڈیوس یور سیلف یس دس از نور محل کبانی میں بھی سارا کو بہت کمپلیمنٹ کرنا چاہتی ہوں ان دا وے شی پریزنٹیڈ ایوری تھنگ اینڈ دیر از اے لاٹ مور ٹو بی لائبریٹیڈ آن وچ ول ہیپن ان اسٹیجز آئی ایم شیور اوور ٹائم ایز فار ایز ٹیلی میڈیسن از کنسرنڈ آئی کمپلیٹلی اگری ود ڈاکٹر کلیم دیٹ وی دی سم آف دا لمیٹیشنس ایون آن واٹس ایپ ایز ویل ایز آن یو نو کمیونیکیٹنگ ود دا فونس ہیز بین لفٹیڈ ہیئر for the reasons of uh, ease of communication with the patients. So the patients' ki jo, uh, hesitation or the judgment of the patient that they have to do something to talk about here, they have reduced it here. So definitely that is something that needs to be done. And as Dr. Shahid Rafiq said, I am working in telemedicine in 2005. And I, even from the physician side, doctors also had a lot of resistance. But it was not that they understood that this is a benefit of our benefit, that someone is taking care of their patients in the ICU and so on. So I think that the point raised in telemedicine point is that I am very uh, uh, hopeful that this will uh, facilitate or, uh, the process of telemedicine in Pakistan as well. Uh, maybe it should be done at a society level of the Pakistan Medical Association if, uh, or the a governing body of the, of the Medical Association. And that if they can be approached to see how they can help facilitate the payment part اگر کوئی اتنا کام کر رہے ہیں کہ فون کے اوپر ایک دوسرے کو مشورے دے رہے ہیں تو ان کو اس کو کوئی معاوضہ بھی مل جائے تو دیٹ از سم تھنگ دیٹ کین بی ڈن ایٹ اے نیشنل لیول جی تھینک یو ڈاکٹر کبانی ناؤ آئی ہیو کوشچنس فرام اٹینڈی اینڈ ون پرسن آئی سی شازمی خان از ایکچولی آئی نو ویری ویل شی از مائی کلاس ویل اینڈ ویری brilliant educationist and um, long time learner. So Shazmi, go ahead. Mm-hmm. I unmuted you. Please ask your question directly to uh, uh, the speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Shahid. What I really want to appreciate the um, enthusiasm by, through which you guys are uh, teaching and educating everyone. Uh, all the panelists, all the presenters, and uh, the people who are sharing their experience. It's really admirable. My uh, question is uh, that uh, since uh, Corona, hai, COVID-2, is a really um, a fluke of virus, uh, light, ka jo, 
pneumonia or um is there if this is the way and if this is the way then is there a way to uh, go around it i hope i'm clear yes sir um bhanji uh, thank you for your question um shazmi um basically i mean pathogenesis virus ka to abhi tak um you know um, study ho raha hai like hame nahi pata ki ye corona virus i mean corona viruses ki wajah se hame खांसी जुकाम हर साल होता है लेकिन कुछ पर्टिकुलर कोरोना वायरसेस जब वो म्यूटेट कर जाते हैं तो दे कैन कॉज व्हाट्स कॉल्ड द सार्स व्हिच इज सीवियर अडल्ट रेस्पिरेटरी सिंड्रोम ये चीज आपको तो 2003 में हमने देखी थी बिकॉज़ ऑफ सार्स कोवी 1 और अब हम देख रहे हैं बिकॉज़ ऑफ सार्स कोवी 2 व्हिच इज कॉजिंग कोविड-19 व्हाट कॉजेस इट टू डू दैट लाइक इज अ इज अ मैटर ऑफ एक्टिव रिसर्च ऑनेस्टली उसमें लाइक साइटोकाइन रिलीज की भी बात हुई है उसमें लाइक हमें जैसे मैं कह रही थी कि थ्रोम्बोम्बलिज्म की भी बात हुई है एंड इट्स इट्स रियली एन एरिया ऑफ एक्टिव रिसर्च और इसीलिए अभी तक हम इसकी हमें सार्स की ट्रीटमेंट का अभी तक पूरी तरह पता नहीं है और स्टेरॉइड्स यूज हो रहे हैं एंटीकोगुलेशन यूज हो रही है कुछ बायोलॉजिक्स यूज हो रहे हैं जो कि साइटोकाइंस के खिलाफ बात काम करते हैं जर्मनी में वो फिल्टर्स यूज कर रहे हैं एक्चुअली फरहान माइट नो अबाउट दम देर दीज फिल्टर्स विच फिल्टर आउट साइटोकाइंस लाइक वो लोग यूज कर रहे हैं it's it's all like uh, you know uh, an area of investigation aur ye virus ki apni ek trajectory hai like you know iska apna ek natural disease process hai pehle jo sars cov2 hai wo sabse pehle aapke upper tract mein uh, replicate karna shuru karta hai jab aap asymptomatic hai aur jab aapke bahut mild symptoms hai tab is virus ka sabse zyada load jo hai like aapke upper tract mein hota hai aur isliye it's so contagious ke aapke saath mein jo banda baitha hai usko koi symptoms nahi hai but he's shedding the virus if he's incubating and wo aapko pass on kar raha hai baad mein ja ke ye virus jo hai wo lower down zyada replicate karta hai and that's when it can cause the sars especially agar aapko risk factors hain to usme 50 saal se bade umar ke log diabetes uh, heart disease wale log men way more than women uh, and then of course other com- comorbidities like put you at greater risk for developing sars zyada tar logon ko of course kuch symptoms nahi hote ya fir like common core symptoms hote hain and as far as like the uh, uh, oxygen is concerned like i don't think there's any uh, ya fir nasal swab like nahi the virus ne niche jana hi hai like so panch ek din ke baad like after onset of symptoms like zyada tar aapko rhinorrhea actually aapko itna nahi hota bukhar hoga dry cough hogi and then usually 5 to 6 days ke upar aapko shortness of breath ho sakti hai and that is what can flare into like the full blown sars thank you sara so i will allow um uh professor um shamsa from pakistan you are unmuted please go ahead ji sabse pehle to main appreciate karungi dr sara ko she spoke so well and elaborated on each and every aspect of the corona mera uh, there's a comment and a question comment about the telemedicine hamare jo aapne bahut sahi kaha ke the ground realities are different yahan pe to log jab tak aap patient ko touch na kare they are not satisfied they want to be examined every time number 2 there is no mechanism jaise aapne very rightly you pointed out ke aap agar uh, us pe consultation de rahe hain you are not going to get anything out of it as far as your fees is concerned so we have to go long way to to, to develop mechanism uh, that is going to help physicians my question is uh, as an obstetrician ye jo viral load hai in amniotic fluid uh how much it is because uh, um, so far we know that there is no vertical transmission but is still is something new has come up or uh, number 2 uh, as i work in a very busy hospital aur hamari gangaram mein mera khayal mein asia mein sabse zyada deliveries hoti hain to at the right right at this point in time all my uh, residents they are wearing full body protection jo wahan pe locally available hai तो इसके बारे में आई वुड लाइक टू लाइटन फ्रॉम सारा के आपके ख्याल में और क्या प्रिकॉशंस लें
जी सर जी जी सो सॉरी योर क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट द डिलीवरी प्रोसेस और delivery process as well as obstetrical examination because uh, we, obviously you have to do abdominal examination as well as pelvic examination number of times during right. labor right um i don't think hamare bhi like yahan par you know like uh, pregnancy as you know is a risk factor for sars and we have unfortunately seen a lot of pregnant women like become become you know admitted to the icu like with covid and with sars जो कि इंक्यूबेट भी हुई हैं लाइक एट्सेट्रा लाइक इन कुछ के इमरजेंसी सी सेक्शन भी करने पड़े हैं बिकॉज ऑफ फीटल डिस्ट्रेस एट्सेट्रा लाइक द प्रिकॉशंस आर रियली द सेम लाइक यू नो सो सो बेसिक चीज जिसकी वजह से ये वायरस फैलेगा ना लाइक वो वो रेस्परेटोरी सिक्रीशंस की वजह से है दैट्स द मेन मैकेनिज्म लाइक ऑफ दैट्स द मोस्ट इन्फेक्शस सिक्रीशन बेसिकली बाकी ये कि लाइक डिलीवरी प्रोसेस में देर माइट भी लाइक स्टूल कंटेमिनेशन ऑब्वियसली यू माइट गेट एक्सपोज टू यूर एन लेकिन अगर आप लाइक ने फेस शील्ड पहनी हुई अगर आपने मास्क पहना हुआ है गाउन ग्लव एंड देर इज डिलीजेंट डिलीजेंट हैंड हाइजीन यू नो लाइक यू टेक द गाउन ऑफ अप्रोप्रेटली एक्सेट्रा नॉट टू इन्फेक्ट योर सेल्फ एंड यू वॉश हैंड्स यू शुड बी ओके देर आर नो एडिशनल प्रोटेक्शन देर आई एम अवेयर ऑफ हमारे जो ओबी गाइन में लोग हैं लाइक देर यूजिंग द सेम प्रोटेक्शन एंड एज आई वॉज मैं इन माई प्रेजेंटेशन एज वेल जो सी डी सी आपको रिकमेंड करता है सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन अवेलेबिलिटी एन नाइनटी फाइव मास्क पहनना बेहतर है वो अभी भी यही कह रहे हैं कि जी एन नाइनटी फाइव अगर है तो आप वो पहने या उस तरह का कोई हायर रेस्परेटर वरना यह कि आप सर्जिकल मास्क पहने सो विद इधर ऑप्शन एज लॉन्ग एज यू है फेस शील्ड एंड एंड ग्लव एंड अगाउन यू शुड बी फाइन शायद भाई सिर्फ एक चीज कहना चाहूंगा कि देर इज वर्टिकल ट्रांसमिशन जैमा में एक पेपर पब्लिश हुआ है जिसके अंदर वर्टिकल ट्रांसमिशन हुई है फ्रॉम मदर टू मदर टू द न्यू बोर्न एंड वे द लुक टैरिट द बेबी वॉज कोविड पॉजिटिव एंड ऑल्सो वॉज पॉजिटिव फॉर आई जी एम एंड आई जी जी सो येस देर इज वर्टिकल ट्रांसमिशन इवन वेन दे वर सॉर्ट्स आउटब्रेक Uh, the data shows there was vertical transmission even at that time and what they really found out ki jo placenta ki maternal surface thi uh, that was uh, pretty abnormal in that breakdown so they're not really sure whether this is because of the placenta resulting in transfer but the igm was transferable um so just just to add it on ke there is but it's very 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 low uh second thing jo yahan par karte hain hamare hospital ke andar wo ye karte hain ke jab baby paida hota hai from a covid positive because you are in contact they wanted to make sure by the time the baby is delivering they want to make sure that someone else carries the baby instead of the person who's delivering to make sure that you that you're not holding the baby with those contaminated gloves It makes sense thank you yes, that's a very good point um and i will say like i mean there is viremia of course initial phase when especially the the virus has been isolated from the blood so as farhan was saying like there is vertical transmission and some of it's also uh plausibly uh we don't know for sure but biologically it's plausible that it's because of active transfer of the virus as well across the placenta okay so let me take another uh, question from uh, i think pakistan khalil mobin please um, introduce yourself and and um, uh, give your question and unmute yourself um khalil mubin you're unmuted but i don't know somehow it's not going okay let me then um, go to uh, mehrun nisa Sajawal, unmuted. Mehru Nisa, can you um, give your question, please? You raised hand. You are permitted to talk. Acha. <clears throat> okay, then Ashraf Memon, let me unmute you. Ashraf Memon raised your hand. Uh, you did raise your hand, so you are unmuted. Uh, one more time. Okay. 
All right. Um, how about Sayyida Noshin Zehra, allowed to talk? Hello. Gigi, Noshin. Um, Assalamualaikum. This is Noshin from Pakistan. I would like to thank all of you to take out time to educate us. Um, my question is, actually, in uh, Pakistan, we have seen some patients dekhe hain who are absolutely asymptomatic or who are COVID positive. Hain. I don't know how their test was carried out because, you know, here, whosoever has some position, they try to pull strings and, you know, do a lot of things. Um, education minister he was found positive although he was he had no symptoms from the surface as a question yeah and then you know certain surgeons uh, who performed certain procedures in our hello can you hear me go ahead uh, surgeries we um, in trauma center to urgent surgeries and Who were absolutely asymptomatic and they are COVID positive. Number one. Number two, how how much authentic is this statement that uh, WHO and CDC is you know issuing that surgical mask is enough? <clears throat> because I think it's more of an administrative decision because of lack of proper mask that they ask us to wear surgical mask. So my now, question is that in this scenario where, where there are so many people who don't show symptoms and then people, that is, healthcare professionals are getting um, the infection from places where they were not even exposed to such patients. So isn't it better to wear uh, N95 at least when you are in the hospital uh, zone? That's my question because we uh, we are encouraged to wear only surgical masks but um, uh, people are doing 24 hour duties in the ERs and in all the on the floors so under the present scenario isn't it better to wear n95 rather than um, surgical masks yes, sir. Yeah, so i i think like mother cdc you know certainly like i mean they're giving you two situations like just say um, you know it was in my slides as well um, ke, you know uh, depending on what's available like up n95 use kare ya fir up surgical mask use kare um, n95s ki of course shortage hai ye higher respirators like kahin pe nahi mil rahe and that decision has certainly weighed into this recommendation kyunki they're realizing ke even developed world mein hamare paas n95s nahi hai ya fir hospitalon mein nurses and other um, staff are being asked to reuse their n95s and yeah, for we we've lived in this luxury where you use it once and you throw it away. Uh, like Mahapur, we're like up, we're, in, we're at a point of hafte hafte ke liye you have to reuse an N95. So that's certainly a factor. But the fa but but the other thing also is that when the virus pehle, like discovered was, everybody wanted to take the highest level of precaution, not knowing that the virus can transmit. Lehaza, that's how the initial recommendation for airborne isolation came about. But so far, like I mean, while it remains unclear we're not seeing evidence of more than droplets. So just I was saying, if more than transmission will be, it will be droplets ki se hogi because of close, close proximity between you and the infected person. So for that, the surgical mask is enough. You know, so, but it depends on that. Like, I mean, there are many people around here, like, you know, who are walking around the hospital with N95s all the time. So, you know, it depends on what's available to you, but I don't think that, is key transmission ke baare mein jo hum jante hain uske upar based on what we know right now i don't think an n95 is absolutely essential or better for that matter i think you might be okay with just a surgical mask also so um uh, shahid uh, i want to add uh, <laughs> So, mai khud sara ne jo baat kahi i think uh, it is not only cdc which is uh, or WHO, which uh, might have some political and uh, logistic issue. Uh, yeah, jo, uh, Society of Critical Care Medicine hai, or Service Civil, uh, Survival Success Guidelines, jo hai, uske andar bhi inhone, isi hawale se jo hai, baat ki thi, ke agar aap koi uh, aise procedure nahi kar rahe hai, jiske andar ke aap aerosolized se expose ho rahe hai, 
तो जो आपका जो रेगुलर सर्जिकल मास्क है इट कुड बी सफिशियंट इफ यू आर यूजिंग टेकिंग केयर ऑफ द पेशेंट विद अदर आई शील्ड एंड गाउन उसके पीछे मैंने मेरे ख्याल से एक दो दफा पहले भी बात जिक्र किया है कि एक स्टडी की थी हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स पे व्हिच वाज पब्लिश इन जर्नल ऑफ इंफेक्शन डिजीज इन 2009 टोरंटो में उन्होंने तकरीबन 1000 हेल्थ केयर वर्कर को जब इन्फ्लुएंजा ए का आउटब्रेक था तो उस वक्त उन्होंने चेक किया कि क्या सर्जिकल मास्क जो है कंपैटिबल है एन95 से कि नहीं और ये एक एक स्टडी सर से डिजाइन की गई थी कि to see ke ye compatibility hai ke ye inferior to nahi hai and they have seen the zero positivity uh, almost similar close to 4 to 5% in both uh, 500 patient in one group and 500 patient other group using the n95 mask uske andar shield or or gauze or gloves istemal nahi hue the so the recommendation ki jo pieces hain wo on the basis of this one data लेकिन कोविड 19 की क्या होगी जिस तरह के सारा ने और दूसरे लोगों ने बताया कि आई थिंक वी फील के अगर हम नॉन एरोसलाइज प्रोसीजर नहीं कर रहे हैं बिकॉज इट इज नॉट एयरबोर्न इट विल हैव पॉजिटिव इंपैक्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रिवेंटिंग अस जी मैं अशरफ मेमन आपका क्वेश्चन है आप प्लीज बताइए अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी जी बोलिए आवाज आ रही सर जी जी सलाम थैंक यू वेरी मच मेरी तरफ से पहले तो सॉरी कि मैंने लेट ज्वाइन किया बिकॉज ऑफ प्रेसिंग इवेंट्स सिर्फ एक क्वेश्चन है डॉक्टर सारा से कि अगर टीएलसी काउंट हमारा इतना रेज होता है जैसे कि मोर देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड गया है तो इज देयर एनी रोल ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक्स और हाउ वी गो अलॉन्ग विद दैट थैंक यू सो आई मीन जस्ट लाइक एनी अदर वायरल निमोनिया मतलब एंटीबायोटिक्स ऑफ कोर्स डायरेक्टली तो वायरस के ऊपर कुछ भी नहीं करेंगी लेकिन यूजली इन पेशेंट्स में लाइक डिपेंडिंग के उनकी यू नो प्रेजेंटेशन कितनी सवियर है वी हैव बिन सीइंग अ लॉट ऑफ केसेस जिन में कम्युनिटी एक्वायर्ड निमोनिया की यू नो लाइक कवरेज जो है व्हिच इज स्टार्टेड इन एडिशन सो यूजली द वे आई अप्रोच इट लाइक यू नो सबसे पहले तो ये कि आपका मरीज है कौन um is it an immune compromised patient is it is it a regular like immune competent host taki mujhe pata ho ki unka risk of infection and ability to fight back kya hai dusri cheez hai unki severity of presentation jisme white count bhi aayega unka oxygen level etc a careful look at the chest x ray you know agar chest x ray waqai like bilkul hi viral lag raha hai you know like koi aapko focal infiltrate wagaira jo hai nazar nahi aa raha ya bilkul jo focal infiltrate hame nazar aate hain of course like with covid like but they have a very particular presentation mostly bilateral agar aapko koi localized low bar findings wagaira nazar nahi aa rahi and the patient's not that sick like i tend not to start antibiotics on them uh lekin agar mareez usse zyada bimar hai ya mujhe koi bacterial pneumonia ka evidence nazar aa raha hai based on my initial assessment then i do start antibiotics dusri cheez ye hai ki aap dusri dusra question aata hai jab aap mareez ko follow kar rahe hain jaise bahut se mareez hai ICU ya floor ke upar I've been following them for for a lot of days like jab mujhe kabhi koi naya fever nazar aata hai na like ya naya white count elevation ya naya like shock uh, hypotension pressers ki requirement etc that's when I think about this because ab ye mareez obviously is like any other ICU patient jo ke intubated hai ya trached hai for a long period of time in the hospital so that's the other situation where you have to think about secondary bacterial pneumonias vent requirement can tell you agar unki vent requirement worse ho rahi hai chest x ray change ho raha etc that's when you can consider antibiotics theek hai thank you sara um let me go to imjad hussain kafi der se um uh haath din ka khada hai aur regular hamare attendee hai so um you are unmuted imjad imjad hussain assalam alaikum ji i'm dr imjad hussain from pakistan ji ji uh, ji i have been regularly attending your webinars actually i had a question and a sort of comment too uh, first of all i would like to appreciate all your efforts and especially dr sara and i just wanted to say about uh, something about this uh, neutrophil thing uh, as we have seen that uh, this uh, this disorder is basically uh, it's uh, basically immune immune dysfunction that's what we are saying like the, like there is 
a uh, lot of uh, messed up T cell regulation, regulatory dysfunction is there. So probably that's the main reason there is more neutro, there is more neutrophilia and the lymphocytes, uh, they are kind of dying down. So it's uh, basically more like uh, a messed up or haywire immune system that has gone. And I just wanted to ask one question. Uh, as we know that uh, this is the time for flu pandemic or flu epidemic also. So I just wanted to know if, like, is it the right time to get a flu shot or it would be, uh, mm. like, it, it's bad somehow to get a, a flu shot at this hour, especially with this virus already in the community. I think, um, I mean, it, it, this depends on where you're practicing. Um, Hamara, Philhal, like, and, and you're right, we've been faced with the same question. Uh, and 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 kuch mareez hain jin mein early on in the epidemic just say january wagaira mein maybe in february uh dono two viruses nazar aa rahe the there were some patients with covid like as well as with uh like we basically run a broad panel just mein rhinovirus bhi hai uh corona usual corona bhi hai and then of course there's a separate test for covid 19 flu bhi hai so co pathogens jo hain uh, earlier on like you know january february mein humne definitely dekhe hain uh, so that's certainly possible okay and I have been recommending flu shots for a lot of patients like January through to February like in, and I don't think it would be wrong to do that like still like as long as flu season and that of course has to be based on uh, you know but anyways like we base it on epidemiologic data. And now, like the flu, flu, uh, influenza ko, uh, jo Department of Health is tracking it. And now, we are seeing that influenza ki activity is being stopped. So, now, we are saying that the flu virus is not going to be able to check the flu virus. If you are COVID positive, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to check for influenza because its activity is going to be reduced. And like, as I'm seeing that, like, I am starting to relax on the recommendation for vaccination. But initially, the flu activity is it's absolutely fine to vaccinate people. Like, with this virus, ke saath ye, ke it remains to be seen that the weather ke saath kaise change hoga. Like, you know, and, and given that Australia, wagara mein, South America, wagara mein, jahan par garmi thi, wahan par bhi ye phela hai, the feeling is that it's not going to be like the influenza virus. But in the air, the humidity ka level zyada hona shuru hota hai, that's when the flu activity starts to go down. So, in Pakistan, mein, flu activity should be on the decline, but I think you have to look at the data in your hospital, even if you don't have like regional data to see how much flu activity you have and decide on vaccination accordingly. But in general, it's definitely a good idea, for sure. Um, if you check the pathophysiology, the amount of COVID COVID likes to infect uh, in, in fact, a distorted respiratory epithelium. This is what it loves. So essentially, that's one of the reasons that you, we were seeing 20% co-infection. And the people who actually has any kind of viral infection have a higher chances of conducting COVID based on the basic pathophysiological mechanism. So if you are in a place where you, where you need a uh, flu vaccine, you should get it. There's no reason not to get it if you are in in in, in that zone right now. Absolutely. So, yeah. And and sorry, uh, do we believe that uh, having a, a comorbid uh, influenza infection with uh, COVID-19 carries a worse prognosis? Has the word been out yet? Uh, I have not seen anything, but conceivably, yes, it might. Um, you know, make you sicker. I would think. Um, but I haven't seen anything on, along there, those lines. Not in my opinion. There is no data yet, but very simple saying is that whenever you have a second infection or a second hit, uh, you always have a high risk of mortality, morbidity, and a higher chances of going to vent. Uh, that's where the secondary bacterial infection itself in the influenza epidemic actually showed a very high mortality. So yes, uh, Based, if you try to use the previous data, you can say yes, but there is no published data yet uh, looking at co-infection and mortality itself. Thank you, Jiam. Uh, as usual, a very interesting session. Uh, we went over time, but what I'll do is 
I wanted to give uh, Ashraf Mubeen a chance and then one last question for uh, our uh, psychiatry um, colleague, uh, Dr. Abdul Rahman, uh, will be the last one. So here uh, is um, Khalil Mubeen. Mubeen Khalil, you are unmuted if you would like to go ahead. Khalil Mubin, are you there? Okay, so. Gotcha, gotcha. I am a family physician in Karachi, Pakistan. Ji, ji. Sir, my question is that COVID is spread it two or three months back in China. It started in China. Ji. And the most important reason for its high uh, endemicity or its high progression was high density of population in China. Okay. So, my question is that why that disease has spread it in New York? After three months, while social distancing is best practiced in New York. Mm -hmm. Social distancing is not the best practice in, is, is not a prevalent practice in New York. I live in New York City in Manhattan um, and New York City is, is definitely one of the most densely populated areas uh, in the developed world. Um, and Basically, the reason why uh, New York City met Nazada COVID, hai, it's for a number of reasons. We were, of course, like kind of a sitting duck, you know, like it, it was going to happen. You know, I, we were certainly set up for it. Just like the city here, the people who are in the city, public transport, leta hai, train, mein khacha -khach log bhare mein hai, like, uh, you know, rush hour, mein, like it's pedestrian traffic, like un unimaginable pedestrian traffic, hoti hai in all of the boroughs in New York, like which includes Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, etc. Like in the reason why it, 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 it got a chance to establish such widespread circulation in the population is because social distancing was not implemented uh, in time. Schools were not shut down. Parks are still not completely shut down. Playgrounds were not shut down. So there were certainly bad decisions that were made um, is why we're faced with what we're faced with. Can I add something? Uh, so, this concept that America has done a lot of good is absolutely wrong. Right. Shahid is the perfect example. Shahid came from Pakistan. Shahid, you came from Pakistan on 13th of March. I didn't check it. I didn't check it. The world is filled with people who are in the world. In the world, 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 in Tahai Badbudar Kam Kia Janab. Dapsab, Dapsab, excuse me, excuse me. Yes, my question is that you, that could be considered a million dollar question. Why America or New York has not done so, in spite of the fact that it, uh, COVID 19 has reached three months after China? This is a million dollar question. 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 Okay. Ho. ये 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 कल आंसर करने की कोशिश की थी डॉक्टर फाउची ने तो उन्होंने आज आके माफी मांगी है जी हाँ और अपनी नौकरी जारी रखी है फिलहाल अच्छा तो लास्ट जो क्वेश्चन है वो ये है कि इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन मेहरून नसार से जावल जो हमारी गैन कॉलेजेस्ट हैं एफजे गंगाराम से उन्होंने कहा कि देस अब्दुल रहमान इफ यू uh, Abdul Rahman from Calgary. Ke wo Mehru Nisa puch rahi hai ke jo uh, residents hai obstetric emergencies ke uh, jo doctors attending doctors hai wo bahut uh, fear or phobia. So let me uh, read it exactly how she wrote. A lot of fear and phobias are observed in doctors attending routine obstetric emergencies. How to address this problem? I think this is not too much with the with the corona, but more like um, I, I don't know. Maybe they are uh, they are having phobia because they might have corona. These obstetric emergencies. So um, thank you for the question. I think uh, again, this is a not an uncommon thing. Uh, you know, we we have often observed that fear uh, of unknown people when they don't know much about what's going on or when they. Are not certain, and uh, there's there's a lot of uh, information, all kinds of information floating around. Uh, it really causes uh, lots of problems. So we had similar problem here in Calgary, 
And we actually, um, two things that we are focusing on. One is uh, asking people really to limit the sources of information. So they're not reading and watching the news all the time. They should be focused on um, going to the right sources for information. And the other part that we are doing is actually having a regular uh, daily uh, COVID update uh, for our uh, physicians who are frontline. Uh, so there is actually a, uh, they come online, it's a Skype meeting and they can ask questions and we are able to provide them with the answer. And there is a, a very um, summarized release of information at the end of the day, so people can go home and read it. So that really creates a, a sense of where they are and uh, if they are giving inf given information about all the things that they're worrying about, for example, the masks and the gears and the PPEs and how to wear donning and doffing and all kinds of things. So, you know, when you give them information that they uh, begin to feel a certain level of, um, you know, safety and, and they can trust the source of information, the anxiety level uh, begins to go down. So that connection and that appropriate information coming from the right sources uh, is very important. Obviously, collegial support and help is uh, um, an additional thing that people can provide to each other. Thank you, Abdurman. Now, I think we come to the end of Dilni Karra Logo Ka Aur Mera Bhi Ke Khatam Ho. Ye Sara Ne Jo Itna Achcha Shuru Kiya Aur Carry Kiya. I think it was a marvelous, uh, uh, marvelous uh, uh, seminar today. And thank you for uh, Sara Temur, our speaker, and our panelist, uh, Dr. Abdul Rahman from Calgary, Farhan Kadir, uh, uh, and uh, Shakil Mirza from Pakistan, Kaleem Ahmed, Noor Mehal Kabani, and all the attendees for excellent questions and your spirit and your coming. It feels very good when Pakistan se log aate hain aur mukhtalif shehron se aur unse baat hoti hai it really makes our uh, day it's of night ho gaye yahan pe lekin uh, we we look forward to it uh, every day so kal tak ke liye um, uh, ijazat khuda hafiz assalam alaikum khuda hafiz thank you very much khuda hafiz thank you thank you everybody assalam alaikum ji allah hafiz